All right, so welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, the hardest career series. Today's episode, we are going for Mac Three. So already taking the contract. Right, we cannot do this thirty-five thousand meters, not with a jet engine. The contract is for just a jet engine, air breathing engine. We can't use either solid rocket boosters or liquid boosters. So this Mac Three contract is the only one we can actually do right now. Will be the final listen of current batch of gap contracts that we'll be actually doing. Well, the next episode we'll be starting our rocket uh, technology experiments. So this will be the final one for this for now. So that's be between 2,525,000 meters. That's to exceed 1,029 meters per second level flight for five seconds, then land back at KC safely. We need a certified pilot. We need wings. We cannot have a solid rocket motor, but we can have liquid rocket motors. So that's what I've done. It's already built. However, if I head to the runway, we should head into the aircraft hangar and I'll show you the aircraft right now, what we're going to be testing for now. If it needs to be modified, obviously, we'll have to see. We should have to test it first. Okay, so this is the aircraft we'll be testing. It's a Kel K1 XSA, like experimental supersonic aircraft. It's a Kerbalized Bell X1. As you can see, unfortunately, with this contract, in fact, all the speed and altitude contracts, you have to finish the mission with what you started with. So, obviously, in real life, these aircraft, the X1, was carried by B-52 to about 42,000 feet, then released from an under underwing pylon. Just like a bomb, basically. Then ignited the its rocket engine. Chuck Yeager being the first human being to pass the sound, but at least officially anywhere, with a rocket engine. So we've got the Severia rocket engine, the G-3RP. But because of these stipulated requirements, we have to finish with what we started with, as I said, it's got to be able to find its way back. It's also got to be able to take off in the runway by itself. So I've included two jet engines. Still the only jet engine we've got available. The Juno J20. With a fuel tank on each wing as well. And an air intake. And that is it. We've got the undercarriage. Hopefully the undercarriage won't cause problems. But that is basically it. We're going to be using the... Uh, Mark 1 Cockpit Supersonic. That is basically all it's called. Not like this one, which is a G8, G A to Z Spectrum Cockpit. This is quite expensive, this particular one. Strangely enough, though, look at the temperature. Mass temp is internal and external, it's 1102,000 Kelvin. This is quite expensive. This is capable of 3,400 and 3,400 both internal and external Kelvin. Which is a bit strange. I mean, it costs less, about half as much. I don't know why that would be. But I opted for this one. He looks better. Alright, so this is it. So this is it. It's already been built. So I'm going to head out to the runway and we are going to test this. Okay, so the first attempt at Mach 3. So I'm going to climb to about 5,000, 6,000 metres. That's probably when these jet engines will actually begin to struggle. So I'll engage with a rocket motor and carry on climbing to about 15, 16,000 metres. And then, uh, well, try for Mach 3 from there.
Okay, just over 6,000 metres. The jets are starting to uh, struggle a little bit. So, we are going to engage the rocket motor in a second or two. Two hundred meters a second, right now. Okay, about three hundred meters a second. I want to increase the uh, climb rate. I want to get to about eighteen thousand meters. Both the jets and the uh, rocket motor use liquid fuel, but only the rocket motor uses liquid oxygen. The oxidizer. So that indicates how much time we have with the rocket motor. Throttling down to about 50%. The jet engines will cut out in about five, six thousand meters. Six hundred and fifty meters a second. Yeah, there we go. Oh, a bit earlier than usual. Can leave it the rocket motor at about fifty percent throttle. Switch to uh, sea level. Halfway there, more than halfway there. Okay, eighteen thousand meters coming up. So we can't go too far because the uh, Air intakes are not designed to go above a certain speed. They'll actually explode and burn up. As will some other parts of the aircraft as well. One thousand and twenty nine. That's it, Mac three. I want to Okay, that's that. So that's Mac three. So I had to throttle back because there some of these parts like the airing takes. Not designed to go at this speed. So they will burn up. Got plenty of oxidizer left, so I'm gonna try the altitude. Four hundred meters. Subtle a little bit. Just help sustain Mac three. There we go. Twenty five points on the apogee. Twenty six. Twenty seven. So I'm going to see if we can actually get to 35 kilometers. You shouldn't have a problem doing that. We've got plenty of oxidizer. Throttle back a little bit. Three 
35 kilometers on the apogee. That's a projected altitude. Got a few hundred meters to go. Well, that's it. That's, so it is capable of doing it, but obviously, because of the contract parameters, we can't use any rocket engines. Which is a shame. Because we could definitely do it. Okay. We've got no control at all, but 36 kilometers. Well, no wells first. Disappointing. Ah, never mind. Alright, so that is that. That is Mach 3 and 35,000 metres. Obviously, it doesn't qualify for the contract. So if we had taken the 35 kilometres, we wouldn't have been able to complete it. Alright, all it's needed to do now is we get back in one piece and land. Oh, that's what you call a hairy landing. Oh, that's fine. The lad you can walk away from is a good one. Okay, so that is that. Contract completed. Achieved Mach 3. Incredible, you have achieved Mach 3. Enigma Kerman says that this flight being space plane program one crucial step toward reality and also comes with some significant funds from the Kerbal Space Program who will benefit from your flight data. So, we've got 42,000 cash, 9 science, and 15 reputation. Alright, so that is that. So, we're going to recover the aircraft. Okay, so the aircraft fully recovered. Got 53.5 signs. Okay, that's all together. Aircraft fully recovered, minus a fuel. Yeah, no new ribbons. It's very strange. I thought they'd got room for Mach 3, wouldn't you? It's got one for Mach 2. So has Valentina. Well, nothing for Mach 3. So we've achieved Mach 3, as well as just over 35 kilometers in altitude, but obviously for the contract, 35 kilometers in altitude, you can only use jet engines, air breathing engines, that's all you can use, there's no, you can't use SRBs, you cannot use liquid fuel engines either, that's why liquid fuel is an oxidizer, which is rocket fuel, you can't use those. Alright, so unfortunately, we achieved 35 kilometers, but we didn't actually we couldn't actually achieve the, uh, the actual contract, but we did achieve Mach 3, and that contract is done. Alright, it's got 330,731. I have begun upgrading 
the space plane hangar. I have upgraded the astronaut complex. I think next we need to take more contracts at the same time. So I think 150,000. So wait till it gets about 400,000 and I'll put this upgrade as well. Alright, but that's the end of this episode. What on earth happened there? Well, I have no idea. Well, that's the end of this episode. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to click like. It is appreciated. Any comments or questions you wish to leave on the videos, by all means, you're more than welcome to do so. Don't forget on Facebook, Twitter, and we also have Discord. We have found all three links to uh, those platforms on the banner on the front page of the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For this series and other series I'm going through right now and in the future. Alright, so that is the end of our gap contracts for now. We're going to be starting our rocket contracts in the very next episode. Alright, but in the meantime, as always, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.